Hi everyone, my name is Sergey Gusev and welcome to my channel. Today I will continue talking about portrait painting and give you my best tips to help you out. So, if you're a beginner, this video is definitely for you. I'm gonna show how to paint a portrait of an older lady in oils on canvas. So, let's get started. The size of my canvas is 20 times 20 centimeters, which is about 8 times 8 inches. It is quite small. If you've watched my videos, you know that usually I start from a very quick sketch, which I make with a graphite pencil. And if you are a beginner, I suggest you using a graphite pencil as well, but you can also use charcoal or a brush. To use charcoal, you need to have some more experience in drawing. So, it is much easier and more convenient for you to use a graphite pencil. I suggest using an HB graphite pencil B or 2B pencil. If you are going to use a very soft pencil, it's going to be quite difficult to erase it and it can mix up with oil paints and make mud on your canvas. So, right now I'm working on a quick sketch. And most like era for the right composition and correct proportions. At the very end of this drawing, I'm going to devote some more time to the facial details. So, make sure the proportions look correct and the head isn't too big or too small. In this case, the canvas is too small, so it's going to be very difficult to make the head very big. But don't make it tiny. Anyway, it's going to be much smaller than life size. Okay, I think I'm done with this sketch. And now I'm going to start working with oils. I'm gonna use quite small brushes, synthetics, with round pointed tip. Right now you see my palette and let's put some paints on it. I'm gonna use Van Gogh oil paints, but you can use any brand you personally like. I'm gonna use titanium white, cadmium lemon, permanent red, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I'm gonna also use cobalt blue, ultramarine, and a tiny bit of ivory black. Here it is. So let's get a small synthetic with a pointed tip and start working from an eye. I am painting the iris, pupil, also working on the upper eyelid. The thickness of the upper eyelid is in the shadow. I'm shading in the sclera. You see that I mixed titanium white, cobalt blue, added a bit of yellow ochre and cadmium lemon. Because the sclera isn't actually white, it has a tinge of blue or yellowish color. After that I'm mixing a color for the skin tones, I'm mixing titanium white, permanent red, and cadmium lemon. I'm gonna paint the upper lid. So, when you're working on the eye, you should remember that the eye is basically a sphere. It's quite a complicated form, it has a lot of details. So, it has a volume, and it means it has light and shadow. Therefore, you can't paint the sclera simply white because it's gonna turn away from the light source and get darker, or turn toward the light source and get lighter. The same happens to the eyelids. When they turn to the light source, they get lighter and colder. When they get away from the light source, they get darker and warmer. This way we see the volume. If I need to make the color slightly darker, I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna, and when I need to make it lighter, I am adding titanium white, a bit of cadmium lemon, permanent red or cobalt blue. You see that the shadows are quite warm. I am adding burnt sienna, a bit of yellow ochre and sometimes cadmium lemon. 
I'm still working with a small pointy synthetic. Let's paint the shadow on the tip of the nose and then continue working on the rest of the face. When you paint, remember about the big volume. Remember that the planes of the head, which are closer to the light source, are going to be lighter and colder. And the planes which are further away from the light source are darker and slightly warmer. This is the basic rule. I don't recommend using a lot of ivory black. Usually I don't like using black. You see that I'm not adding a lot of ivory black. I'm adding a tiny bit of it into the shadows, mixing it with burnt sienna to get a nice deep reddish brown color. I never use pure black. Right now I'm going to work on the hair. Remember that the hair isn't flat. It has a volume and so light and shadow. So the hair in the light will be colder and lighter and in the shadow darker and warmer. So you see I'm using quite a lot of titanium white, cobalt blue and a bit of cadmium lemon for the lights. For the shadows I'm using more yellow ochre, more cadmium lemon and much less titanium white. And right now it's time to work on the lips. The corner is in the shadow, so it's gonna be quite dark and warm. Let's mix some dark colors like burnt sienna and a tiny bit of ivory black. It's always necessary to draw when you paint. It's necessary to care for the tonal values. Not only for the colors. So always remember about the light source. And remember that the shadows will always be darker than the lights. The planes which are closer to the light source are going to be quite light. So the tip of the nose is going to be quite light. The cheeks are a little bit further away from the light source. So they are going to be quite warm. And also slightly darker than the tip of the nose. When you paint, try to remember about the structure of the head and facial details. If you don't understand how to draw the facial details, the eyes, nose, lips, I always suggest making smaller sketches or longer studies, simply with a graphite pencil on paper. This way you will understand the construction of the head much better. And when you understand the structure, you will be able to apply your knowledge to any portrait. Okay, let's work some more on the lips. Remember that the upper lip is gonna be darker and the lower one lighter. It gets a lot of light from the light source. So I'm gonna use more white, more permanent red and a bit of burnt sienna for the lower lip. Usually I suggest working on the lights and shadows almost at the same time. 
So when you work on the lights, don't forget, once in a while go back to the shadows and make sure they are darker than the lights. If you mix up lights and shadows, the portrait will look inexpressive, grayish, flat and boring. So it's always important to make sure that the shadows are darker and warmer than the lights. This is the basic rule, just remember about it, the shadows are always darker than the lights. Ok, it's time to work on the other eye and the skin tones around it. I'm gonna paint the upper eyelid, I mix some white, permanent red, cadmium lemon to get a nice cold color for the skin tones. Don't forget to paint the shadow above the upper eyelid, it's quite dark and warm. So mix ivory black, a tiny bit of permanent red and burnt sienna. You can see that this shadow is really far away from the pure black. Remember that the shadows get darker when they are close to the light source. When they get further away they get a lot of reflections and so get lighter. Right now I'm going to work on the iris and the pupil of the eye. When you paint the sclera, don't forget to adjust the shape of the iris. Don't forget to add a reflection into the iris. This reflection comes from the lower eyelid, which is in the strong light. So this reflection is gonna be quite cold. Don't forget to put a highlight on the surface of the cornea at the end. Ok, I think we are slowly getting to the end of this portrait, so let's work a little bit around and finish the surroundings. Let's work on the background hair and make sure all looks quite finished. Also at the end I want to add a nice bright reflection into the tip of the nose. So let's mix some permanent red, cadmium lemon and add a bit of burnt sienna. You see that the reflection is quite strong and bright. At the end, once again check the big proportions, make sure there is no mistake. If you see any mistake, fix it immediately. Make sure that the shadows are darker than the lights. Let's work some more all over the canvas. Finish some small details and add a cold reflection under the chin. This reflection is coming from the white cloth, so it's gonna be quite strong and cold. I think this portrait is quite finished. Maybe I'll work a little bit more of it after it dries up, but I'm not gonna make any big changes. So I think it's time to stop working on it and maybe put a nice frame. I have a simple one over here. Ok, I think it's time to look at how it turned out. I think it's quite finished. Put thumbs up if you like it, you can also help me out and share this video with your friends on your favorite social network. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, find me on Instagram and Facebook. 
Also don't forget to visit my webpage and download the full video tutorials. I wish you good luck with your others guys and see you soon.